Good evening, everyone. This is Hannah, and I'm coming at you recorded from the paddy wagon tonight. This was supposed to be live, a time to just kind of gather around my my digital piano in my RV and, you know, share some Christmas tunes and Java together. But uh, bandwidth, where we are, has um, raised its ugly head and has said, no, you can't do it live. And so I'm recording this for you. And I just wanted to let you know that I really did want to be with you live and entertain all of your comments and your your, your silly things to say and kind of interact with you, but uh, it is what it is. It's kind of like the theme of 2020. It is what it is. And so, just know that this is going to be done, is being done exactly how it would be if I were live, which means you're going to hear everything. I don't like to make recordings because I wind up making them 57 times trying to find just the perfect cut. And um, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted it raw and unedited and just fun. So um, you're going to hear everything. You're going to hear bloopers and, and you're going to know a secret about me. I, I hate practicing. So um, my selections tonight were based on... Uh, the Christmas music I happen to have downloaded on my computer be from before we went on our journey and um, and also things that I could put together fairly decently in two days. And you might hear our new dog Daisy whining and whooping uh, throughout this. So anyway, as close to live as we can get without actually being live. So anyway, we're just going to continue and I do have a few things to say throughout, but uh, right now... I hope your halls are decked. The big fat man in red comes in just one more sleep. And so uh, uh, if your halls haven't been decked, get to it while I play Deck the Hall Hoedown. I don't play a whole lot of 
hoe down music. It's not really my thing, but it's kind of a cute arrangement. So, um, we just got done with winter solstice a couple nights ago. How many of you saw the grand conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter making that beautiful Christmas star? You could really only see the Christmas star effect if you had a good telescope, but, um, it was really kind of awesome knowing it's been four centuries since we've seen anything like that. And um, I don't know what the dawning of the age of Aquarius means, but I do know that uh, winter solstice is an ancient, ancient observance celebrating um, the inevitable turn from darkness to light. Um, that uh, Celebrating that no matter how dark the world gets, the sun will still come up and the light will come back and yes our days are getting longer now yes um and hopefully hibernation season is ending i i need to not be sleeping so much but um anyway and all of our winter holidays um whether you celebrate yule or just the straight winter solstice or christmas or hanukkah or anything they really all are based on that that the idea and the concept and the reality that darkness does not last forever and um, so the Christmas story of course takes place in one of the darkest times of history when there was so much oppression going on in the world and um, this uh, particular tune in the bleak midwinter is one of my favorite favorite Christmas songs because it talks about how hope came in the middle of bleakness and blackness and darkness and despair and so just remember that hope shines brightest when everything looks hopeless so in the bleak midwinter if, if you don't know the words they were written by a 19th century poet Christina Rossetti one of the best poets of all time in my not so humble opinion my opinions generally aren't very humble so um, anyway in the bleak mid midwinter and music by Gustav Holst the best composer of all time, again, in my not so humble opinion. <laughs>
So that last one was um, one of my mom's favorites. Um, it came upon a midnight clear. Again, the darkest time of night is when those shepherds in the fields saw the bright light of the angels and that message of hope and goodwill for everyone on the planet. Um, so think about that. You can catch that that Saturn that Jupiter conjunction uh, probably decently tonight and uh, tomorrow night and then by Christmas night it, they should be pretty well spaced apart and yes you did hear Daisy in the background she wants to get some camera time this is our new rescue dog Daisy we decided to give her a life with a little more hope than she would have at the Humane Society so she's still learning some manners which obviously is not interested in many manners tonight but you know um, yeah she says where's my cookie all right so she's gonna go back and see her dad now anyway so the next song I want to play is one of my dad's favorites um, and I want to tell you just a quick story Christmas story uh, about my dad is the most probably the most um, meaningful influential Christmas of my entire life and it was the Christmas of 1984 I was a sophomore in high school um, had just celebrated or was getting ready to celebrate my 15th birthday um, uh, or had just celebrated my 15 maybe it was 1985 no I'm quite sure it was 1984 because I think I was a sophomore in high school anyway no matter 84 85 sophomore junior in high school and um, my dad w loved Christmas. He loved all the stuff. He, he loved all the, the he didn't, didn't necessarily love all the noisy children, but um, he loved the decorating and the presents and the festivities and the food. He really loved the food. And, and Christmas was always a great big deal for our family. Um, and like all other parents, they, my parents sacrificed to make sure we had mountains and mountains of presents under the tree when we woke up. And, and I will say, probably those mountains and mountains of presents were way beyond their their means and they would extend themselves just to make sure we had a great Christmas and my dad did like to spoil us so so we always had great Christmases and um but that year uh I think it was shortly before Christmas um I remember uh getting a call at school one day and um my dad in the middle of the school day had suffered a massive 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 heart attack doctors didn't know how he survived it um, and it kind of put the kibosh on any big Christmases because um, everything that they all the resources that they did have uh, were spent going towards medical bills and you know we had really good insurance and even so you know a heart attack is a heart attack and, and they're expensive to deal with and so that year, um, my mom handed me, and of course then my sister and my brother, she handed us the, the Sears Wish Book. How many of you remember the Sears Wish Book? It was like the coolest thing, because it came out like in August. And so, you know, we would always spend months and months circling everything in that catalog that we wanted. And um, it was a really somber year. and. So my, our instructions were, you can circle one thing and it has to be $20 or less. And that was going to be our Christmas. Um, and so I circled what I wanted. And Christmas Eve came and Christmas morning came and my dad was alive. And, you know, as much as we get angry at our parents and, and if, you know, we know how teenagers are and we just get so upset sometimes. and relationships between kids and parents aren't always good but boy we were so grateful that my dad was alive and he sat there on Christmas morning and um, read to us the Christmas story from the New Testament book of Luke which was our thing and then we opened presents and in our case that year they were the presents we had picked out for twenty dollars or less and I had picked out um, I was of that age where toys really didn't interest me and what I picked out was this beautiful um, plaid knit scarf and it was a great big fat one you know I guess today we might call it a prayer shawl you know it just a, but it was this snuggly snuggly thing that I could wrap up in and um, 
And I had that for years. I kept that. I took it with me to college. I would wear it every winter. Um, one year it got stolen from it was a public, you know, I'd hung my coat up somewhere, my coat and scarf, and both of those things disappeared. And so I did lose my scarf, you know, like 10 years later. Um, and it was, oddly enough, it was right after it was a winter right after my father did pass away he was with us for another 10 years 10 years that the doctors could not believe he had um and so right after he passed my scarf disappeared um but you know what that experience kind of i don't want to say cured but it kind of took away from me the idea that christmas was made meaningful from lots of stuff and trappings and you know it's like the Grinch said maybe it's not about the trimmings and trappings maybe Christmas is something a little bit more and for me Christmas is um, about being not having mountains of presents and honestly we've never given our kids or grandkids mountains of presents um, but it's been about being with each other and and treasuring our, our family and our friend relationships um, and that still is what means more to me at Christmas than anything else, is the love of family and friends and the connection that we have with each other. So, um, this was one of my dad's favorite Christmas tunes. Um, he loved the crooners, the great crooners, and of course Mel Torme was one of the, uh, is still one of the best. And this is the Christmas song written in a jazz idiom because of course it is a jazzy sort of song so um refill your coffee and go throw your chestnuts on the fire <laughs>
So one of the things that I miss, um, maybe this year more than other years, but um, something that I haven't done in a long time is um, go to a candlelight service on Christmas Eve. And um, my favorite part, of course, has always been when the uh, at the end of the service where the room is darkened and everyone in the room has, has a candle and one person lights their candle and then they pass that light from one to another until the entire dark room is filled with light and um, and usually the, the services I've gone to um, while that's happening people are singing Silent Night and so that's what I want to end with um, before I do that um, two things one is that one of my one of my intentions for 2021 is to, yes, I know I hate practicing, but one of my intentions is to prepare something that I can offer to everyone as a gift of love, um, some musical offering every month um, on Facebook or YouTube or whatever. Uh, but uh, one of my challenges is, right now in life is learning how music fits into my life and into the lives of others without it being my job and whether it was privately or publicly music has been my job for a long time and now it's not my job it's just what do i do so how do i use it to channel love from me to everyone else so um so just be watching for that i'm gonna work on that um so a monthly something um and the other thing to remember is you know what things might look a little dark right now in fact they look really dark right now but all it takes to brighten one dark room is one candle. So don't let your candle go out. Don't let your hope die. Um, there are 8 billion of us on this planet. And if we pass the light of hope from one person to another, we will drive out the darkness. So, silent night.
Merry Christmas, everyone. I love all of you. Have a silent and a blessed 2021.